good morning, afternoon, or evening from wherever you're tuning in from today. Thanks for joining part three of our five-part mini-series on continuous quality improvement or CQI practices. These videos are intended to be short, bite-sized videos to help you quickly understand the ins and outs of CQI practices and how to get started today. Today, we'll delve into the power of smart indicators and objectives, equipping you with the tools to drive meaningful change in your community. Let's start with understanding what SMART indicators are. SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Time-Bound. Creating SMART indicators ensures that your objectives are clear, measurable, and aligned with your organization's mission and goals. To build a SMART indicator, we'll use what we learned in the last video about outcomes. If you haven't watched that video, I recommend taking a few minutes to watch it before you continue on with this one. Once you have identified program outputs and client outcomes, it's important to determine ways you can measure these data points. Since outputs are service focused and tell the volume of work, outputs are oftentimes easier to measure. Outcomes, however, are client focused and tell the benefits of your services, requiring separate smart indicators to demonstrate their achievement. Indicators tell you, me, or a key stakeholder how you know you're achieving or have achieved your outcome. It shows the progress a program is making towards achieving a specific outcome. Now let's spend some time discussing SMART indicators to understand how they are developed. Your indicator is the specific piece of information that you collect to figure out how successful your program was in achieving the outcome. Anyone who reads your indicator should have a good idea of how you're measuring your success. It's important to remember, we don't measure outcomes directly. We measure indicators to determine the success of our outcomes. So you know by now, we are no strangers to simplifying this information by creating a formula out of it. Our formula for creating smart indicators is number and percent of clients impacted plus measurable impact from the outcome statement. Let's look at a few examples to understand how indicators help us measure the success of our outcomes. So let's take a look at some of the outcomes our friends at Alice's Animal Rescue have created and turn them into smart indicators. One, community members attend educational workshops, learning about responsible pet ownership. We can track this by looking at the number and percent of community members in attendance to understand the appropriate type of food for their pets. Another example is adopted animals thrive in their new homes, demonstrating improved well-being and integration. We can also measure this by looking at the number and percent of adopters who will report improved well-being and integration of their new pets. And our last example is, foster families provide temporary homes, increasing the shelter's capacity to rescue more animals. We can track this by looking at the number and percent of foster families recruited and retained through recruitment campaigns and ongoing support and training. Now, those are some smart indicators. There are several smart indicators that we could have chosen, but just like everything with our outcomes management, we have to decide what works for our program and select the indicators that truly reflect the work being done. Here are some helpful tips to get you started with creating smart indicators today. Involve people from all aspects of your organization. Look at your industry, specialists, academia, or published research. Only one indicator per outcome is necessary, but if you must, two or three is enough. Once you get into a groove, you may find yourself wondering how you'll know if you need a new indicator or when one no longer serves you. Well, there are two major things to ask yourself when reflecting on whether your indicators are still a good fit for you. One, do you consistently have high achievement rates at 95% or higher for two or three years straight? If so, that's great and indicates you have met or exceeded your goal in this area. It also means there may be room to prioritize other areas of your program. The next thing to consider, is this indicator providing enough information for program improvement? If not, then you want to explore other aspects of your program that can give you a better understanding of how to make improvements. Once you have your SMART indicators ironed out, you'll want to consider if you have the appropriate data sources and methods or tools for collection. Now let's put your knowledge to the test with a quick quiz on outcomes and outputs. I will ask you several multiple choice questions and wait just a few seconds before showing you the answer. Feel free to pause the video if you need more time. Why is it important for objectives to be measurable? A, to ensure they are achievable. B, to allow for tracking progress and assessing success. 
or C, to align them with the organization's mission. What does achievable in SMART indicators mean? A, the standard is not so high that program participants cannot achieve it with reasonable effort. B, the standard is easy and requires minimal effort for program participants to achieve. Or C, the standard is open-ended and flexible for program participants. Which one is an example of a SMART indicator? A, shelter staff utilize best practices. B, two shelter staff implemented best practices. Or C, number and percent of shelter staff implement best practices. Great work. If you had a hard time answering any of the questions or you just wanna take a look over a certain section before moving on, use the chapter breakdown to jump to that section if you're interested in reviewing. If you're interested in learning more about United Way of Greater Houston's efforts in this space, through our Coffee and Quality programs, we are taking this work a step further by empowering our partner agencies and community partners to lead the way in strengthening data practices across the nonprofit landscape. Check out the link below to learn more information. If you're ready to move on to the next section, buckle up and get ready to learn all about logic models for nonprofits.